Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs. Today we're going to be looking at this mid tower case from Aerocool. It's called the Bionic. It's got a roughly 45 UK pounds retail price, and we've got links in the description just below if you're interested in purchasing. From high-speed networking to enterprise storage, at Orchill we have a solution for you. We're a UK-based vendor specialising in computer hardware components, so whether you're powering a data centre or upgrading a laptop, we can help. At Orchill you'll get a dedicated account manager that gets to know you and your business, supporting you from our head office in Yorkshire. All our products are OEM compatible, tested in-house to ensure performance. And what's more, we offer a five-year warranty across all our SSD range and lifetime on our memory. Want to find out more about our partner programme? Visit Autual.com. Okay, so we're looking at the Aerocool Bionic case. As you can see, it looks pretty much all black apart from this white stripe down the front, which is going to be RGB. It does have an RGB fan on the back as well. You've got this glass window, which doesn't take up the full side of the case. It goes down roughly probably about three quarters of the way down. And at the bottom, you've got a steel panel there. The steel panels on this are roughly half a millimeter thick and the actual glass, I'd say, is roughly around about three millimeters thick. On the front of the case, it is made out of ABS, so plastic. At the top, you've got your I.O. control panel, where obviously you plug in your USB and stuff like that. So you've got two USB 3 ports. You've also got headphone and microphone. You've got standard USB 2 port, and you've got power and slash reset. But it also, the reset button also allows you to change RGB lighting. You've got some holes cut out on the top for airflow, so you can attach two fans on here, two 120mm fans. They do have a strange sort of design to these cutouts. It's sort of an hourglass design because the holes, sort of, there's a triangle here and then a triangle there, uh, which is basically bigger holes, and then these holes are smaller, which seems a little bit strange. It's probably for design, but there is no mesh or magnetic mesh or anything like that what goes on top for a dust filter or anything like that, so it's pretty much open to the elements. Okay, on the bottom of the case, similar story to the top, you do have the air intakes there for the power supply, but there is no mesh or anything on the bottom to protect it from dust, so it's gonna suck in whatever it gets. Advantages, you don't have to clean it out. Disadvantage, obviously, it's gonna suck all the dust in into your PC. You've also got four feet on there as well, so that obviously lifts it, lift it off the floor. But if you are having it directly on a floor, make sure it's on either a hard surface, ideally raised off the floor, and not on a carpet, because a carpet will easily take up those feet and the case will sink into the carpet and block the airflow on the bottom. On the bottom of the ABS on the front, you do have a bit of air intake along here on this side, and it's a similar story on the top of the case as well, where it also has air intake at the top as well, but it only seems to be on this side and not this bit. So I'm not sure if that's going to be enough airflow to keep a high-end machine pretty cool, especially in the hot weather. Okay, on the back of the case, it's pretty straightforward. You've got your standard I.O port there which obviously you put an IO shield there and your motherboard goes inside the machine. You've got seven PCI slots there. This case will take either an ATX motherboard, a micro ATX motherboard or a mini ITX motherboard and obviously you'll be able to use these ports depending on the board. You do have a 12 centimeter fan installed on the back which is RGB on this model. This is V2 of this model. They do have a V1 version as well which comes with a standard black fan rather than RGB. RGB. So on the side you do have this glass panel here which does have a piece of plastic on the front. Let's just peel that off first. You've got four screws on there which obviously hold the glass panel in place. Let's just take that off. So give me a second. Well, I suggest you hold on to the glass when you do something like this because the last thing you want it doing is falling out because I can't see any ledge or anything where it's going to hold it in place. 
So let's pull that. Yeah, there's nothing there holding it in place other than probably a little step there. So if you unscrew those screws, that glass is going to fall out if you give it the slightest of knocks. Okay, the inside of the glass also has a piece of plastic on it as well, which is there. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for the actual glass. And it is glass, not plastic. Okay, let's go over the specifications of the case quickly before we go in depth on the inside. So drives, you can support two three and a half inch drives. So that's your traditional hard drives. Or you could replace those three and a half inch drives with two solid state drives. So you've got the combination of those. So you can either have two hard drives, two solid state drives, or one hard drive and one solid state drive. Uh, but bear in mind, you can also obviously install SSDs on your motherboard if you've got an M.2 slot and so forth. Now, you can add another two solid state drives or two and a half inch bays on the actual machine, but the problem is with that, it only works if you're using a mini ITX motherboard because the hard drives or SSDs will have to screw in here and a big full size board is going to cover that area up and not allow you to screw them in. So that's only if you're using a mini ITX motherboard, which isn't that common people generally do. But again, that's up to you. You've got those seven expansion slots where you put your PCI cards and stuff like that down there. Now air cooling. Down the front, you can either fit three 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans. Along the top, it will only support up to two 120 millimeters. And on the back, even though there's one already installed, you can support or it can support up to one 120 millimeter on there. Also, you can fit two 120 millimeter fans on the shroud at the bottom. Personally, I'm not seeing how they'll work 100% to be honest with you because obviously it's designed to cool your graphics card um, down but it'd be sucking air from this area down here and there's no air intakes in that section of the actual case unless the air is having to squeeze through this bit here uh, so it's not going to work very well from what I can see but you never know it's basically just moving around hot air by the looks of it but we'll have a closer look at that in a few minutes. So liquid coolant's pretty straightforward. You can either put a 120, 240 or 280 millimeter radiator along the front. For the 280 millimeter though, it only supports a max length of 323 millimeters and a max thickness of 28 millimeters. So that does limit you if you are using that size. On the top, you can uh, potentially put a 240 at the top I would have thought uh, but saying that it doesn't mention that on their specifications uh, possibly because if you did put one there it's probably going to get in the way of a lot of the motherboard and so forth but it doesn't actually specifically say that you can't or can put one there and then on the rear you can put a 120 mil one on the back Graphics card wise, you can fit a GPU in up to 297 millimeter without front fans. So that means you can't have any front fans on the case if you've got a graphics card, if it is that long. Obviously take away from that 297 millimeters if you are going to put a fan on the front, the size of the actual fan. And then you've got CPU clearance, so that's the height of your CPU cooler, which is 158 millimeters. So if your CPU cooler is 160 millimeters, you're not gonna be able to put that glass panel back on the case. So you will need to make sure it's 158 millimeters max. So the inside of the case, first of all, as we said before, it takes either ATX, micro ATX, or mini ITX motherboards. Okay, so obviously depending on which one you've got, they will fit inside there. So that's pretty straightforward. You've got a power supply shroud, which is fitted in there. You cannot see the branding of the power supply. So even if you've got a really good one and you want to show it off, no one's going to be able to see that. Um, if you've got a really rubbish one, well, it's going to hide it. So whichever way you want to look at it, you can fit two fans on there, two 120 millimeter fans. Bear in mind, the air is going to be sucking in from the bottom and there's no ventilation on the bottom of the case for it to basically suck from the outside, apart from a little gap at the front of the case, which that's going to have to suck in hell of a lot of air to be able to cool down two big fans onto a graphics card. 
On top of that, you've got obviously your motherboard cut out there and you've got lots of holes for cabling. Obviously some of these holes will be covered up depending on the size of the motherboard you're actually fitting in there. Cabling is visible from the front unfortunately, so the cabling does come down from the top corner here. So I'm not sure if you can see that 100%, but it comes from here and then goes for a hole there. There's no way of really hiding that, it has to come from that bit, which is a shame because it's sort of coming down and it will actually be in a way, or sort of in the way of some of the fans if you did put some fans on the front of the case as well. So it's a bit of a shame, uh, but it is there. But otherwise, it's, it's fairly neat inside. You can see a lot of the cabling through the holes, but obviously when you've got that back panel on and you tidy it up, a lot of that should be hidden. Okay, so you've got the back of the case. First of all, you've got your hard drive bay here, so you can fit two three and a half inch bays here, or drives here, should I say, or you could fit two two and a half inch drives there, or one of each, depending on how you want it. You can fit two two and a half inch SSDs here and here, but that's only if you've got a small enough motherboard, which is usually on, only if you're going to be using a micro ITX uh, motherboard. But otherwise, the cabling is all black. Well, I say all black. We've got the usual culprit. Unfortunately, both the USB 2.0 as well as the audio cable have got sachet packet colored endings. It looks a bit like, uh, I don't know, uh, an episode of um, Sesame Street where they've got a rainbow on it or whatever. You've got all these different colors all over the places. If you're trying to make a nice looking machine which everything's black and then suddenly you've got these big rainbow colored cables everywhere i say it on every single case review we do near enough and it's very few cases will actually cover these up they can do it i've seen it in budget cases which you can pick up for 15 quid where they've covered these bits up in black and then i've seen cases where there's 200 pound and they show them like this it shouldn't be done we're not in 1995 anymore this is 2021 these bits need to be covered up so i'm sorry as we do with all reviews you get knocked down on our score if you have these cables it's just not acceptable especially when you've got a case which has got a glass window on the side so you can see the nice insides of your machine and then you put something stupid like that in there Right, so the rest of it uh, is pretty much straightforward cabling. It's all black, there's no controller on the back of the actual board itself. That's actually built into the front of the case. You can't connect any more fans or anything like that, so let's just say RGB fans, ARGB fans or anything like that, unless you get one of Aerocool's fans which will fit on this splitter, but it's got to be one of their specific ones which fits this very specific four pin connection. So it's not your standard RGB or ARGB connector. And that usually controls the fans as well as the lighting, which you would then change through the button on the top. That would be powered via a SATA cable here. So you'd have to pull that into your power supply. There doesn't seem to be anywhere you'd be able to connect those parts up, unfortunately to your motherboard though. So you're reliant on using the controller built into the case. You cannot control the RGB through your motherboard software or anything along that lines. So that's a little bit of a shame, but again, it is a 45 pound case, but then again, I have seen 45 pound cases which do have that ability. So take that as you wish. Otherwise, you've got roughly a finger's width of room for your cabling, depending on where you are. So it should be enough to hide your cabling as long as you're not too messy and put too much through there. It may be a bit of a struggle if you start overlapping like power supply um, cables, like your 24 pins and uh, eight pins and six pins and stuff like that over the top of each other. It could cause a few bulges on the back, which might make it a bit hard to get the back of the case on. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for the back of the case. Uh, but unfortunately, as I said, the big major letdown is the multicolored cables. And I know they're going to hate me for saying it because I say it on every review. Guys, sort it out, please. Okay, the front of the case, so this bit which is plastic with the RGB effect on the front, which I'm not sure if it's actually RGB or ARGB, to be honest with you, because uh, I've not actually seen this case on yet, apart from in pictures and demonstrations. And in the demonstrations, it looks like it's addressable RGB rather than standard RGB. If you're not sure what the difference is, standard RGB means the whole front or the whole of that strip has to be the same colour at the same time. So it'd have to be all red, 
or all blue or all green. Addressable RGB means that each individual LED light in that strip can be a different colour. So you can have it multicoloured or wave effects and so forth. So we're going to have a look at that in a few minutes just to see if it is actually addressable RGB or RGB. Not that it matters much because you can't connect it to your motherboard anyway, but some people may want to know the difference. Okay, so to take the front off, there's like a little lip on the bottom which you can pull. It is quite difficult to pull off, but once you have got it off and pulled it off, there's the case. You can see it's got cabling attached to it already. This cabling is for the RGB light effect which would be there as well as the little controller which it has inside. So that controller again doesn't have any room to add any extra devices apart from that one uh, connection on the actual cable a bit further down. So, Which is a bit of a shame to be honest but again it is a £45 case. The biggest issue I can see with this panel is airflow. The airflow is pretty much non-existent. You have got little slits here and a few little slits there. That's supposed to be able to suck in potentially three fans worth of air on the front as well as potentially the air, what's going to be pushed up from the fans, what you have at the base of onto the PSU shroud. So do you really think you can get five worth, five fans worth of airflow through those little slits there and there? The answer to me is a definite no, but we are going to do a, a basic test in a few minutes just to find out if I'm actually right, and I'm pretty sure I am. Okay, so we've got the machine built up. We haven't got the glass side on because we don't want, obviously, reflections from the studio lights on the glass while I'm showing you. As you can see, it looks pretty nice inside there. One thing we did find out is it is very difficult to fit a water cooler on the top of the case, unfortunately. So we decided to fit it on the front. But the catch is, if you've got a full-size motherboard and then you try and fit a water cooler on the front, it's very tight and very difficult to fit the 24 pin cable in and thread all the cable in through because well there's very little room it's very compact in there don't get me wrong you can do it but it is very difficult so if you are planning on getting a water cooler for the front of the case i suggest you get the thinnest one you can possibly get uh, otherwise you're going to have difficulties yes you can fit a long graphics card in there but the problem is with all, when you put a long graphics card in is you can't put any uh, fans across the front of the case which means very little airflow into the case so basically it's having to suck all the fresh air from down here but the problem is is okay yeah there's vents on the top of there and you can even put fans there but there's nowhere down here for it to suck the air from, uh, apart from a little slits along the bottom here. So in basics, you're going to be sucking in very little fresh air from the bottom or anywhere uh, to cool down your graphics card. And that goes for pretty much the rest of the case as well. It's okay if you put two fans up here, that will extract heat out of the top, that's brilliant, but the catch is, it's very difficult for it to actually pull the air in. You're pretty much making a vacuum inside there because you're sucking all the air out and it's very difficult to actually pull any air into it because there's very little places to do that. So it gives you a rough idea about the case. So in basics, yes, you can build it, you can make it look nice, but I would recommend staying away from water coolers on the top. That's probably why they didn't mention it on their website on the top. Um, to be honest, if you can, stick away from the water coolers on the front as well. So ideally, I'd suggest you have an air cooler in here and put two or three fans down the front to help it suck a little bit more air in. But bear in mind, as I said, it's only going to be a little bit because the gaps up here and down here are that small. You can pretty much only just get a pin through the holes to actually be able to suck the air in. So it's not going to be able to get much to cool it down. Okay, as you can see, it's got RGB effects on the front as well as on the fan at the back. You don't need any special controllers. You don't need to plug it into your motherboard. Actually, there's no option to plug it into your motherboard. You only can change the lighting effects with the reset button on top of the case. Don't get me wrong, you can wire the reset button into the reset switch on the motherboard. That will allow you to reset the machine, but unfortunately then the RGB effects are going to be stuck on the setting thereof. So if you want to use the RGB effects, all you have to do is press the button on the top and it changes it. It's as simple as that. And these effects, to me, I class those as addressable RGB, not RGB. 
mainly because each individual LED can be coloured a different colour at one time. So, for example, standard RGB means all these LEDs have to be red or blue or green, one set colour at a time. They can change from red, then to blue, then green and so forth, no problem, but they have to all be the same colour at the same time. Same for the fan. You can't make half of it red, half of it blue, or even a quarter of it one colour and so forth. It all has to be the same. So this to me is called addressable RGB, even though you can't manually address it yourself, but you can via the button, what's on here, which will let you change the effect. So I'll just give you an idea, a few, a few of the different effects. As you can see, a few different strobing and wavish effects on there of the different colours. So you can pretty much go down most colours on there, including white. And then you've got more again, multicoloured effects on there. And again, you've got even more. So it's, it's really down to you. There's quite a few different effects on here. I've not counted how many there are, but there must be about 30 or 40 at least on here, I would have thought. As you can see, there's quite a few. I can keep pressing these and go on forever until we go back to the original setting we had it on which is there so it gives you a rough idea obviously that button controls the lights on the fan as well as on the front okay what we're going to do now is an airflow test to do an airflow test we need to see obviously the air going in and the best way to do that is with smoke so what we've done is created our own smoke and we've used well joysticks and well a bit of fire and equal smoke and what we do is hold them towards the case and as you can see the smoke rises if the airflow was good that would be getting sucked into the case and well to be honest no matter how close i put it to the vents it's pretty much not getting sucked in it's just going straight up we've even added an extra fan into the case on the front side to suck more air in but it's not able to suck that air in because well these vents are pretty much non-existent i'm going to say uh, you struggle to get a piece of paper through the vents because of that fin and to be honest with you it's a huge failure on their part because the computer case the whole idea of it is to protect your components not only just physically but also by keeping them nice and cool and if you can't get fresh air into the computer it's not going to keep it cool and that's going to cause issues from the machine crashing when it gets too hot as well as causing issues if you want to overclock or anything along that lines and also the lifespan of the machine the hotter the machine is the less time it's going to last so you're basically causing damage to your machine really by not having good enough airflow so if you want a low-end machine which is probably not got much in the way of a graphics card really low end i'm talking probably a geforce 1030 here maybe a 1050 at the most probably an i3 processor you'll probably be all right but anything more than that you need a case what's got better airflow on it so in conclusion it's hard to know where to start with this one because it looks nice you've got some nice features the price isn't too bad but what you actually get for the price is really just a glass window and some nice lights to be honest with you you've got no option to connecting them up to your motherboard you've got really no option of adding any extra rgb onto the actual controller or anything like that and then the biggest issue which is the airflow unfortunately the airflow on it just uh, well it wasn't very good at all um i'd like to say it was pretty appalling to be honest with you because it's got all these features for example you can put the fans in the bottom to blow air up to the gpu but the problem is is the air intakes on the front are that small they're unable to drag enough air in to be able to feed those fans properly and even if it was the amount of air would have to go through those small little gaps it would be basically whistling constantly because obviously the air is getting squeezed through these small places um, which it's not so basically the airflow is just getting pushed around in circles and it's not going in the right directions as it should do unfortunately we did some tests with the front panel of the case on and off and basically by just taking the front panel off on the case we reduced the temperatures of our water cooler which is on a 10700 kf intel i7 processor we reduced the temperatures on a 30 minute test by 
12 degrees Celsius. That is quite a huge difference. As soon as we put the front back on, the temperatures started going back up again. And we were getting extremely high temperatures. And it was pretty much the same story for the GPU as well. And we're running a GeForce 3070 graphics card, which obviously not everyone's probably got at the moment because of, well, all the shortages. But still, it got very hot. And again, as soon as we took the front off the case, the temperature of the GPU you drop by eight degrees celsius within a few minutes and it ended up being roughly around about nine to ten degrees on average over a 30 minute period which is a huge difference that's showing you that the air is just not getting into the case to cool it down don't get me wrong if you're wanting a low-end machine which is basically using built-in graphics or a low-end graphics card maybe a geforce 1050 or something along that lines uh, you'll probably be okay um, but if you're going for a high-end machine like high-end obviously gpu processor and stuff don't get me wrong it'll work but it's going to run really hot which isn't going to help it in the long run obviously the hotter things are the less overclocking you can do again not everyone wants to do overclocking but it also means more thermal throttling which means the cpu on the graphics card has to slow itself down because it's getting too hot and then also it reduces the lifespan of the electronics inside the machine so this case I'm not going to say I don't recommend it. I'm not going to say I do recommend it. All I'm going to say is, is if you want something that stands out, not very fussy about being able to control the lights via the motherboard, you don't need a lot of airflow because you've got a low-end machine, maybe even the second-hand components which don't cause a lot of heat, then it might be the case for you. But if you're looking for a new build, generally you're wanting one of the new NVIDIA graphics cards or a top-end AMD processor, then I'd look elsewhere. Thank you for watching this video, everyone. It's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel, and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you, and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.